to the UU Church of Haverhill and thank you for joining us for worship this Sunday. We are so glad to have you with us. And we hope that you will, if you haven't already, check us out online at uuhaverhill.org where you will get information about what's happening here and links to the different things we're offering online. And if you like, you can sign up to receive our weekly e-news which will let you know things that are coming up this summer, like the fact that we are offering summer chalice circles and a book group, and that things like Vespers and Sun, the Thursday bag lunch, those things are taking a break for July and August. So if you get that e-news, you will be most up to date and you'll be able to stay connected here. So we hope you'll do that. But for now, let us be here. Let us be grateful and let us be glad for this time to join in worship together. It is so good to be together. comes from the UU minister, Reverend Manish Mishra Marsetti. Between rocking the boat and sitting down, between stirring things up and peaceably going along, we find ourselves here in community. Each called from many different journeys, many different life paths, onto this river road. Some are here because the rocking of the boat has been too much. Too much tumult, too much uncertainty, too much pain. Some are here with questions about where the boat is going, how best to steer it, where this journey ends. Others are here as lovers of the journey, lovers of life itself, here in front, beside, behind, each a passenger, each a captain, all of us doing the best we can. Rest here in your boat with me, the river calls. Listen to how I flow the sound of life coursing all around you. Let the current hold you. Let the current guide you. The river that gently flows through your soul whispers, come, let us worship. And now won't you join us in singing the first three verses of hymn number 126, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
imagining that we remain standing now in body or spirit after our opening hymn, I'd like to invite Sophia to light our chalice. It's a symbol of our free faith and the reminder that however we are gathered, the spirit is in our midst. Let's join now in our unison affirmation. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love and to help one another to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony with the divine. And we might say, were we together in our sanctuary, you may now be seated in body or spirit. And won't you join us now in a time for meditation and prayer with two verses of the hymn, Calm Soul of All Things. of the way our community gathers together is by sharing our joys and our sorrows as the joy is magnified when it is shared and the sorrow is lessened with the support of one another. This first candle comes from Pat Feller. Who wants to light a candle of joy for Trudy Blythe, who has served as president of the Ladies Circle of our church for more than 10 years, and who has volunteered every Thursday in the church office for many years as well. Pat says Trudy has been the main driver of most post-memorial service lunch spreads as well, and she thanks Trudy for all she does. Our next candle comes from Cindy Malin, who would like to light a candle for her colleague, Janine, who is having some health concerns. Cindy says, please send healing thoughts and prayers to Janine. Trudy Blythe, excuse me, Trudy Blythe would like to light a candle of joy and appreciation for the ladies circle. I don't think she and Pat coordinated this. Trudy says, this wonderful group of people have been serving our church since the 1800s. Trudy's proud to say that they contribute to scholarships, support the homebound and grieving and coordinate special events like memorial service luncheons and the annual rose tea. The Rose Tea is their only fundraiser and the funds support maintenance and security of church building and supports our membership. The Circle also provides an important social out outlet for members, especially those who have newly joined the church. Trudy said, I'm proud to say that I'm honored to be the president of the Ladies Circle.
this candle of delight is for the fathers and the dads and the papas and the father-in-laws and the stepdads and the godfathers and all who we celebrate this Father's Day, including my brother who became a dad a couple months ago and who my son calls Uncle John. This candle is a candle of joy for the celebrations and calls to action on Friday, which was Juneteenth, the day that enslaved folks were emancipated a long, long time ago, but also not so very long in our history. This candle is for the change our country is undergoing and for the calls to make Juneteenth a national holiday. And our final candle goes out to all the joys and sorrows that you keep in your heart quietly this morning. We are with you. Won't you gather your spirits and your hearts up to enter prayer with us on this day? A loving and gentle God, great and wondrous mystery that many of us call friend many of us call this sacred earth under our feet and that many of us call this our circle our sacred holy circle of humanity be with us help us to remember that you are never not with us but we need that reminding in these days, we need to be reminded that there is a loving power in and among us, sustaining us, holding us, and indeed guiding us. For all these named and unnamed joys and sorrows, we are grateful for a place a place to name them, a place to call them our own, a place to lay them down and lift them up, and indeed a place to be silent with all of them. These are hard times, and many of us are afraid and weary. And often we just don't have the words. Help us to find silent moments to rest in. And great spirit of life and love help us to know that we are not alone in all of this. In all of this we pray and for all of this we are grateful. Won't you now enter into the silence with me Sometimes the silence just says it all. Amen and blessed be, dear ones.
the great humanitarian and Dr. Albert Schweitzer once said something so true. He said, at times our own light goes out and it's rekindled by the spark from another person. Each of us has cause to reflect with deep gratitude on those who have lighted the flame within us. In these days, I am ever grateful for all the different ways you are lighting flames within one another and out in our world. For all the ways you are showing your hope and your faith and your generosity. Thank you for the difference you are making in our world. Our, our offering will now be gratefully received. The reading this morning is this little poem by the Persian lyric poet Hafiz. The small man builds cages for everyone he knows, while the sage who has to duck his head when the moon is low keeps dropping keys all night long for the beautiful, rowdy prisoners. And once more, let's hear this poem by Hafiz. The small man builds cages for everyone he knows, while the sage who has to duck his head when the moon is low keeps dropping keys all night long for the beautiful, rowdy prisoners.
Last Sunday, Claire asked me to read a powerful reflection by Dr. Beverly Daniel Tatum about working against racism. And the last line of that reflection touched me deeply because her words were ones that my mom used to say to us, to whom much is given, much is required. That line comes from the Bible, from the Gospel according to Luke, in a chapter where Jesus is preaching and teaching. At the end of a parable, Jesus says, from everyone to whom much has been given, much will be required. It's not the most popular idea these days, not in our culture anyway which tends to celebrate individualism over shared sacrifice. From my elders, I also learned that church was supposed to, they said, comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. That we who lead relatively comfortable lives, we need to be shaken up from time to time. It is good for us to be made uncomfortable, because too much comfort can blind us from what is going on and separate us from our siblings who are suffering and in need. You don't need me to tell you that we are living in some uncomfortable times right now. COVID-19 is killing people and making lots of people ill and it's wrecking the economy, it's hemming us all in. And it has been particularly devastating for people who are already at the margins. And in recent weeks, there is this growing awareness now. It's not a new thing, but it's a newer awareness for lots of folks that racism and white supremacy are still infecting our society. That even with all the work and all the struggle, things haven't gotten that much better. That individual hearts and minds need to change. And even more importantly than that, systems that perpetuate white supremacy need to change. Several weeks ago, I had the privilege of being on a panel about racism. And this helped me to think about these times that we are living in right now. Some people who have tended to be comfortable in our society, who have had some amount of power and ease, they are finding themselves less comfortable these days. And that's a good thing. In recent years, this has happened to some of us, to many of us even, who have been privileged in one way or another. We've had our power questioned and challenged. Men in the Me Too movement have experienced this. Ministers have experienced this in these years following clergy sexual misconduct scandals, and the decline of organized religion. Police officers are experiencing it, experiencing it right now in this time of increased scrutiny and criticism of the abuses of law enforcement. White people in this era of Black Lives Matter are feeling uncomfortable. And it's good for us, for any and all of us who have been in positions of power, even when we weren't aware that we were in positions of power, to hear how our power and privilege has affected others. It's uncomfortable, to say the least, to be the target of what can feel like undeserved criticism. It's natural to want to defend yourself, to say, but I'm a good person. But that is not a good or helpful response. Isn't it clear that what is needed these days 
is for some people to be less comfortable for a change, for the comfortable to be afflicted, and for the afflicted to be comforted. In matters of race, those of us who are white, we need to sit down and be quiet and let the black people do the talking so that we can listen and learn so that we can change. In matters of gender, those of us who are male need to stop our mansplaining and be quiet for a change so that we can listen and learn and change. In my brain, I know that this is true. And still, it is easier said than done. Just this week, one night over dinner, our daughter observed that I have a tendency in conversation to interrupt, to insert my thoughts, to interject with word or gesture. She said she first started noticing this in high school, and it continued in college when boys, believing they had something really important to say, would interrupt. It was annoying, she said. It is annoying, she told me. I sat there and I listened and I squirmed and I felt this turmoil inside. And at some point in time, I pushed back rather gently, but I pushed back. I said I thought she might be seeing things too much through the lens of gender. I defended myself, which later I wished I hadn't done, which later I regretted, which the next day I apologize for. I know that what is required of me as a straight white man right now is to listen way more than I speak. What is required is that I take criticism and squirm and not rush to defend myself or make excuses. Easier to say, harder to do. As Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So I understand that police officers and those who support and appreciate them, they might be very uncomfortable right now with the voices criticizing cops and calling for the defunding of police budgets. But isn't this hard questioning precisely what is needed these days? For police to sit and listen to their critics, to hear the stories of black people who have been pulled over and harassed in white neighborhoods, to look into the faces of those who have been hurt by police, hurt by those who are supposed to protect and serve everyone. And aren't these kinds of hard conversations part of what needs to happen for healing and change to be possible? What is required of us is that we have courage and fortitude for the living of these days. In whatever form this may take, given your particular circumstances, it may be committing to listening to criticism you are inclined to dismiss. It may be learning that these issues are not primarily active on the personal level, to stop taking it so personally and learn about the systemic problems our culture faces. It may be talking more honestly with your friends and family about race, as one of you recently vowed to do. It may be finding new and creative ways to stay connected and to be in community in this time of distancing as many of you are figuring out how to do. It may be taking care of your own soul and asking for help when you need it. What is required in this intense time is that we not shrink back from these challenges that we face. 
rather that we acknowledge them and face them so we can do what is needed so that we will be agents of love and liberation in a time that is so hungry for some hope and for some goodness. As Hafiz wrote in his little poem, we are here not to be building cages, but rather to be dropping keys all night long for the beautiful, rowdy prisoners. The invitation, especially in this time, is to be speaking up and speaking out and standing up for our values and for our faith. And I'm so grateful for all the ways I see you doing this already. Bill, Ta Bill Taylor and the Social Justice Resource Team organizing last Saturday's food drive. Christy, Betts, Sally, and everyone who's been adapting and expanding community meals and helping feed the hungry. And Abby Wirtz, one of our frontline workers, an ER nurse at Lawrence General Hospital. Do you know what she did recently? She organized a kneel-in at the hospital, a protest in support of Black Lives Matter. Even though she got criticized for this, even though it, stepping up in this way felt risky for her, Abby did this. She did what was good and right. She took what we profess here and she made it real where it counts out in the world. I'm so grateful for her and for all of you living out your faith being the change you want to see in our world. To whom much is given, much is required. So what are you going to do with these gifts and these blessings you have been given? Thousands of years ago, the prophet Micah asked the question, that I've been wrestling with recently. What is required in these days? Micah observed that the Holy One has already shown us what is good. That if we search our hearts, we will find there is a moral compass within us already. And then Micah asked, and what does the Lord require of you? That is the question, my friends. What is required of you and of me in these days? And Micah's answer still rings true. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice? and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, and love mercy, and walk humbly with your God? May this be our commandment and may it be our calling, now and always. Amen. And may we take heart that we aren't in this alone, that we have each other and the Spirit with us always. Let's join our voices in singing Blue Boat Home.
let's remain standing in body or spirit in our figurative pews while Sophia extinguishes our chalice, which has made its home in her home these past several months. We can imagine Sophia and Frank headed to the back of the sanctuary now before our benediction. Let's say our words for extinguishing the chalice together. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. And now for our benediction. Life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may there be a fire that burns so brightly in our hearts that it does send us out to do the work we have been given to do. To love one another, to serve those in need, to build the common good. So we do help renew the face of this good earth. Go in peace and go in love, dear ones. Mm -hmm.